Hey everybody, welcome back to my layout. This will be a layout update for April 2019. Let's take a look at what's new on the layout. So unfortunately I kind of neglected the layout this past month. I didn't get really anything done since the last update besides a little bit of the foundation here, the sidewalk at the Bamp Station. I finished uh, the, the final piece. There's a flower bed in the center of this, so use the Google Earth to measure the diameter and then carefully cut that out. I used my palm sander to sand down the 1 8 hardboard here, you can see, to kind of do the, uh, the sidewalk curbs where they've got it level with the pavement in the parking lot. So on this particular uh, sidewalk, they've got two kind of curbs so you could have wheelchair access or stuff like that so just sanded it flat uh, my, with my palm sander. Down at the other end of the station platform I did find I was digging through some of my stuff that I've got boxed up and I found a BLM, BLMA um, one of their utility structures and this is going to be a good start for my speeder shed at Banff. It's a really nice little shed by BLMA it just needs uh, some painting and weathering and it's pretty much ready to go. Um, I'm going to use it as the storage shed at Banff, there's a couple other buildings, but the speeder shed I'll probably still have to build uh, by hand, scratch build it because it's so uh, it's so custom, but there's a there's kind of an addition on the back of the speeder shed that goes like that, and I think uh, that's what I'm going to use this structure for. For now it just kind of looks good, and uh, it was called, they, they called it the uh, Trackside Equipment Shed, fully assembled. So this past month I spent most of my time uh, working on this engine. So I'll stop him here and take a closer look. So I had one of these CFX uh, AC4400 CWs sitting in a box for, I don't know, probably five years. I finally got around to putting a decoder in it. So I redid all the lighting on it. Uh, LED lights all around front and back. I uh, put a new Soundtracks 2 Tsunami GE file in it. Uh, the decoder is the PNP type. And then did some uh, light weathering on it, uh, a few detail parts, and renumbered it to the 1001. Uh, the reason I did 1001 is it's the class leader of this order of AC4400s. And it goes from uh, 1001 to 1025, had the high number boards. So if you see that back unit, and this is one I did like five years ago, the first one I did, it's uh, 1025 behind it there. So there's the class leader and the top of the class. It's just a fun way to for me to remember uh, what the what the beginning and end of, uh, of of order numbers were. One thing that I did differently on this guy that I forgot on the uh, the 1025 when I did it was uh, that later on they got uh, anti glare on the nose. So I tried to recreate that just using black, uh, I masked it off and just black airbrush sprayed it on there. Turned out pretty good. Here's a closer look at it. I know it's missing a wiper, I gotta find another one. Kato never gives you uh, any extras of those and if you lose one, it's, you're, you're done for. I think the anti-glare turned out pretty good. It's kind of a tricky paint job to uh, get the masking so close to the edge there. I used the Details West brass horn on this one and it looks a lot better. I wish I would have done it on the other one that I built. but. So you're all learning things uh, you learn the first time. As for comparisons, you can see this one has the stock uh, Kato plastic horn on it, and the Details West one looks a lot better. There's the Kato one for comparison. I'm pretty happy with how the weathering turned out. I was trying to go for like uh, maybe they just put it through the wash rack look, where the grills and everything are still really black and sooty, as well as around the exhaust stack and the horn and everything on top, but. For the most part, the uh, the hood and everything is fairly clean. I think I am going to end up giving it a light fade, though. Um, the advantage of weathering it like this, I didn't have to mask the windows to do this because I didn't actually spray the uh, the body with anything. Besides, I took the trucks off, the tank, and everything. But uh, I think I am going to put a little bit of fade on it just because uh, when you compare it with the other one that I did, the uh, the other one's faded quite a bit. So just to kind of make it, maybe get them to look a little bit more alike. Just a super light fade on this guy. So because I was able to weather this guy, I actually got the airbrush booth running, and that was one other thing I spent a lot of time on this past month. 
So let's go take a look at the new airbrush booth. So the airbrush booth is uh, totally operational now. We've got the lighting and the blowers all done. It's actually wired in series, so you just hit this switch here and gives you your lighting and the blower kicks on at the same time. And I think the camera is probably showing it pretty good, but it is super bright in there. It's really nice for painting. Uh, and now it's just uh, it's awesome having this is permanent. And so I got my brush there. You have the sink nearby, and you can just quickly clean the brush, change colors, and just go on to the next next color. So the technical details of the uh, the lighting it's it's pretty much identical lighting to what the layout has. Um, I mean I used the same. This is the uh, aluminum flashing L channel or L trim I think they call it uh, for siding. And that acts as a heat sink, so the, the LED strips are silicone to that with a really good electronic high temperature silicone. And uh, that, that aluminum flashing helps, uh, helps distribute some of that heat that's created by the LED strip. And the LED strip is that same, same lighting I used on the layout. Uh, it's made by Yuji, and it's a 95 plus CRI, um, really high, high quality light that comes off of it. So it's good for painting. It's really, it's really close to daylight. So there's a little bit of a closer shot. You can see how the uh, LED strip is silicone to the flashing. And I don't even take the sticky backing off the LED strip. I just silicone it right to the right to the flashing and I use clothespins to uh, to hold it on and let the silicone set. Throw in a picture here to show you. So the uh, the power is provided by a small 12 volt driver that's underneath here. You can see the uh, the wire coming up for it there, and the wire the black wire is it coming down from the switch. So the switch has uh, 120 volt AC coming to it from the breaker, and it just uh, splits off inside the switch box. Goes the black wire goes down to the LED driver, so it's just uh, tied right into the 120 volt uh, AC off of this switch. And then for the ducting, I just uh, Went to Home Depot and picked up some, I think it's 5 inch, because that's what my dryer vent is. Some uh, 5 inch ducting and a flexible piece, and run it outside. So it goes to a dryer type vent and has little flappers. When you kick on the blower, the flappers open up and it uh, vents outside. So in addition to getting the paintbrush booth finished, I also have one more project I started on the workbench. So let's get down there and take a look at that. All right, so workbench is just an embarrassing mess right now, but that's okay because this is what this is what progress looks like. So this is another Kato SD9043 Mac in CP colors. So this was the last locomotive that I have had sitting in a box for many years, just like the CFX one. Uh, this one's probably been sitting in a box just as long, probably five years or more. About time to uh, to get a decoder in it and do the lighting, get it on the road. So. That's what I've been up to the last couple of weeks. I've been working on this guy, so I'm gonna do something different with this one and something I've never attempted before. Um, this one was nine one three eight before, and so I stripped the number off it. I'm gonna renumber it to nine one five nine, and uh, your you astute CP Rail guys will know that was the pulling for United Way unit. It was a unique paint job. Um, only one SD90 Mac had it, so that's the one I'm going to do. And uh, I've stripped the, the long hood. This one had the Golden Beaver and the Blocks Canadian Pacific on it. I stripped that off. I'm going to redo it and put a new decal on there with the Pulling for United Way. Those are the decals I'm going to use. They're custom made by Rail Graphics. And uh, I've had these as long as I've had the this locomotive, so hopefully these water slide decals are still good. Fingers crossed that they're gonna come off nice when I when the time comes. So those are gonna go on the long hood, uh, just following the prototype pictures. So when I was talking about uh, stripping the golden beaver off this long hood, holy cow! I mean, I've I've done this lots using the same method, um, just taking the road number off, and that's pretty easy. I mean, it doesn't take long at all. This was a whole different animal. Um, I think I used at least two pink pink pencil erasers like grind them right down to nothing and a lot of uh, microsol just kept brushing it on then use the pink pencil eraser a little bit then brush on more microsol 
and uh, yeah, it took forever. And the worst was the uh, the golden beaver crest on there. Holy cow, was that hard to get off? So now that I've uh, got it off of there, and it came off pretty good. You can't really see you can't see any remnants of it unless you look super close. See, like even looking close with the camera um, at this angle, we can't. Like I don't, I don't know. I can't see it from here in the camera. Maybe it'll turn out different, but I think if you if you kind of get a glare going off of it, you can see it. But it comes off uh, pretty clean doing that method. Just a lot of work and uh, took a lot of patience. This is I'm I'm so glad that they only had one of these because I'm definitely not doing another one of these. So, like the CFX unit, I'm going to do like a light weathering, kind of have it maybe after it was washed. Not go whole hog on the weathering. Um, you can see I've already started the black wash and I did uh, you know, black wash all the cracks on the long hood and the uh, vents and stuff. And then I'm going to go ahead and put those decals on and uh, probably do a little more black wash once those decals are dry and sitting down in the cracks nice. Get it all weathered up. Of course, I'm going to redo all the lighting with LEDs. So these uh, these Kados come with the light tubes, and then the um, the light source is kind of right off the light board. So you can see it here. That's the uh, the old Kado light board. So I rip all that out, rip out the, uh, the light tubes, and put my own LEDs in there. The same ones that I showed you how to solder the leads to a couple videos back. So that'll be what I'm working on uh, over the next couple weeks. Uh, when I have time, come down here, get a couple steps done. Just today I did the, uh, took the cab out, and uh, if you remember way back from my old old videos on the old layout, one of my favorite things to do is to put little paperwork on the uh, conductor's desk. So I did that in this one and that CFX uh, lease unit. Just doing fun little stuff like that. Once I get the decals on there, get it reassembled, do a, gonna give it a light weathering, like a really super light fade and just a light weathering and this one will be ready to go. Speaker, um, same speaker I used in the CFX unit, the iPhone 4 speaker. It's uh, siliconed up in the long hood here. Oh, one other thing that I did that's different on this one than the first one I did was uh, I bored out the exhaust stack and uh, the reason for, do, for doing that is to try and get a little more sound out of the shell. Uh, this way, at least there's a hole in the shell somewhere for the sound to escape. So the speaker opening is uh, right about here, and then so there's a hole there. So hopefully that'll uh, help allow a little bit more sound come out of it. So that'll wrap up the, this layout update, guys. Hope you guys are having a good spring. Uh, the snow's almost melted here. We've got a little bit left, and it's starting to get warmer out. So we spend a little more time outside with the kids and stuff as summer approaches. As always. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.